We're looking for the cistern behind the lower barn. So there's the little barn. Over there, you can see a telephone pole. That is the well pit. That's where the well pump is. Hopefully you'll never have to do anything with that. The cistern is down through the woods. And right there, nice and camouflaged. I left the door open from when I thought I was recording this video and wasn't recording. So, inside, it's just a hole in the ground with water in it. Now, you see that pipe? That pipe leads to the well pit. That's what the pump actually pumps out of that then goes into a pressure tank and supplies water to the barn. Ideally, we want that elbow to be underwater significantly. Um, it does go down to a foot valve. You've got a couple more feet of water, but nobody likes running out of water. Um, unfortunately, right now, the cistern leaks. And maybe someday somebody will have time to climb inside and figure out why and try to patch it. But it only holds water up to about there. See the form boards, the remnants from the form boards when the concrete was poured. You go one, two, three, four, five boards down, and that's all it holds. So, there's no sense running water continuously and flooding out everything down here. Um, but we need to fill it up at least once a day in the summertime, maybe even two or three times a day. The way you fill it is it pumps out of the stream. We have this lovely downspout uh, contraption, which I'll explain in a moment. And there's a switch over here, gets you oriented. There's the cistern, here's the switch. It's a timer for 15 minutes, which should be all it needs. The pump we have now pumps pretty good. You can hear the water coming down, down the downspout. comes from this little pump in the stream. Now the reason we have this crazy contraption is because this needs to work in the wintertime when hoses and pipes freeze. So the idea is when the pump shuts off automatically, the water drains down from gravity through the downspout and that there's nothing left in there to freeze. And the hose coming from the pump shouldn't have this much slack in it, but it should be able to drain itself back down. And while we're here, I wasn't planning on doing this, but little, little tip. I really like to have the pump oriented the other way. So the stream is going this way. The mouth of the pump is down there. I like turning it around so that the mouth of the pump is pointed downstream. That way, when you get all the debris that comes washing down in the storms, it doesn't clog up the mouth of the pump. And ideally, and it's been dry so we don't have a whole lot of water, ideally you want the pump as submerged as possible because it, the stream will keep the motor cool. But that's what we got. Sometimes when it gets really dry, you got to dig out the stream a little bit um, and dam it up, make a pool, something so that you have a sump so that you can pump out of it. And if you have, if you know that a big storm is coming, pull the pump out of the stream. It's attached to this rope, but pull it out of the stream just so it doesn't wash away or get full of silt. But if everything's working right, all you have to do is turn on the switch. Now, I deliberately put the switch down here by the stream. Certainly, it could have been up where it's easier to get to, but I want somebody, whoever's turning it on, to be down here to be able to hear if it comes on or not. 
if the switch is somewhere easy to get to, you just turn it on and walk away. You don't know if it's pumping water or not. By being down here, you can hear, you know it's pumping water, and if it's not, then you can figure out why. And you can see it, it moves a good bit of water. We keep the cistern closed to keep, to keep critters out because you don't like dead animals in, in your water. So, I reckon that's all there is about that.